Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are, regardless of the time difference. Welcome to our live event. I would like to express my sincere gratitude to Dr. Ichak Adizas for his participation and support. Dear Ichak, let me say how honored we are to have you here today, sharing your valuable uh, counsel in this time of crisis, when everyone is affected and dealing with more and more challenges every day. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for your precious support to our children with neuromuscular disorders. In its 20 years of operation, the Muscular Dystrophy Association of Greece has helped its members to deal with the multiple problems caused by neuromuscular diseases. Our goal is to improve the quality of life of our children, to be as independent as possible, and to have equal opportunities in our society. Today, we support more than 1,300 families all over Greece. During this time, our association has created and equipped three model clinics in major state-owned hospitals. In this way, a nationwide network has been created to provide specialized medical care. At the same time, we provide our children with education, training, and entertainment, as well as therapeutic exercise at MDLS House, a specially designed and fully accessible space in the center of Athens. These goals have been accomplished mainly thanks to the ongoing support of the private sector, individuals, corporations, and foundations. MDA has never received any governmental funding. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks to the evolution of medical research, patients' life expectancy has increased significantly. We aim to provide specialized care and access to promising clinical trials. Our association has recently launched a partnership with the Jane Foundation in Seattle, in the United States and also belongs to various European networks. Two of our clinics have been certified, one as a center of expertise and the other as a clinical trial center. Our next goal is the creation of a model clinic for adults in Athens. All the proceeds from today's event will be donated for this cause. For their generous help in making this goal possible, I would like to thank our sponsors, the companies Lavi Farm and Grant Thornton, our supporters, the companies Dedicacia and Hellenic Petroleum, our media sponsor, the newspaper Capital.gr Kefalo. I would like also to thank the American College of Greece and especially Mrs. Claudia Caridis, Vice President of the Public Affairs, for supporting our cause. Thank you all for getting connected with us today. This event is be held under the auspices of SEV, the Hellenic Federation of Enterprises and the Hellenic German Chamber of Commerce. Now, I'm pleased to announce the moderator and good friend, Mr. Willisis Kiriakopoulos. Mr. Kiriakopoulos is a well-known, not only as a successful entrepreneur and philanthropist, but also as the chairman of the Hellenic Federation of Greek Enterprises, SEV. He has been recognized twice among Europe's 500 dynamic entrepreneurs and has also received the Kouros Award of Entrepreneurship by the President of the Republic of Greece. Both he and his family have a significant charitable action. Dear Ulysses, welcome aboard. Hello, Vanna. It's a great honor and a pleasure to introduce tonight mm -hmm. to our friends and audience, uh, Ichak Adizas. Dr. Adizas is the founder and president of the Adizas Institute, a leading international consulting firm ranked by Executive Excellence magazine as one of the top 10 consulting firms of the US. The Institute is headquartered in Santa Barbara where Ichak lives and uh, he will address us actually from California today. Uh, Dr. Adizas has served as Dean of the Adizas Graduate School for Study of Leadership and Change 
which trains Adidas managers, consultants in, in its clinical doctorate program. Dr. Adidas has listed in Leadership Excellence magazine as one of the top 30 thinkers of our time. For his contribution to management theory and practice, Dr. Adidas has been awarded 14, actually I'm, I'm wrong, it's now 21 honorary doctorate degrees from several universities around the globe. The, uh, he has received, among other things, the Ellis Island Medal of Honor for, for his contributions to America. Dr. Adizas has published 26 books in 36 languages, and we have recently discovered that his books have not been published in Greek. So we're going to do something about it sometime soon. He, Dr. Adizas was born in Northern Macedonia, uh, the country neighboring Greece. He has worked many, many, for many years in Greece and has a lot of friends and clients here, among them uh, the, uh, in the pharmaceutical sector, in the automotive business, in the mineral sector. My old company, s &B, used to uh, work very closely with Adidas, and I would say that he has been the most influential person in my professional and probably also uh, has a great impact in my personal life. I have to tell you that he loves our country and he loves to also dance Hasapiko. So having said those few words, and I'm sure I have missed a lot, the word is with uh, Ichak. Thank you, Vanna. Thank you, Ulysses. You really made me... I hear myself. How do we stop that? I don't want to hear myself. Good. So, thank you both. I, you are absolutely right. I'm absolutely in love with Greek, with the Greek music, Greek people, the warmth of this. And my wife and me, would then will come and we'll buy something in Greece and spend a lot of time in Greece. <coughs> thank you also for inviting me. This is a big honor for me to participate in this event, in this cause, helping people. Uh, this is this is what life is about. If you can really give from your heart, it fills your heart. You know. So let me share with you my experience and my knowledge that I accumulated from experience from working in 52 countries, as you heard, including Greece. How do you manage? And I, in this specific lecture, speak presentation. How do you manage in time of crisis? Let me start. First of all, let's talk about what is crisis. What is crisis? We have to understand before we can manage it. Would you agree with me that I will say nothing new if I say that there is change? And by the way, the change did not happen just with Corona. The change started with the Big Bang, when the, the world was created. What happened at that time? According to physics theory, time and space started. Time and space. And what is time? Time is change. We are changing right now. Every second something is happening, is changing. First, what they call it YPO, take on value. You cannot stop change. Why? Because you cannot stop time. Some are trying, by the way. The very, what they call it, radical religions or political parties trying to stop change. You cannot. You can stop yourself, but the world continues. You can stop your company, the world continues. You can stop the country, the world continues. Now listen to me. Even if you are on the right road, 
if you don't change, a truck will come and run you over. Some companies do, we are doing very well. We are doing very well, you know, America. We're doing very well. A truck might run you over because while you're standing, change continues. You cannot say, I stopped, so everybody stopped, which, by the way, the radical Muslims are trying to do that. They try to stop the world because they stopped. Nobody will succeed. Change keeps going. So we better learn how to manage it. How? What happens when there is change? Do you agree with me that everything is a system? The universe is a system, by the way. The world is a system called ecosystem. You as a human being, you're a system. A company is a system. A forest is a system. And what does it mean, a system? It's composed of subsystems that collaborate for the total system to work. And every system is a subsystem of a bigger system. And every bigger system. It's like the Russian dolls. One, everything under the other. So every system has subsystems. When there is a change, the subsystems do not change at the same speed. Take a company example. For some of your executives. I can take also a personal example, but let's start with a company. You have the marketing subsystem. You have the sales subsystem. You have a production or operation subsystem, financial subsystem, human resources subsystem. What happens when there is change? They don't change at the same speed. Marketing changes relatively fast. They do marketing research, sit down, and we are going to change the price, we are going to change the product, we are going to... Yeah. How long does it take to change a sales force? Oh my God, wait a moment. You have to train them, you have <laughs> a little bit longer. How long does it take to change the production? Oh. How long does it take to change the accounting system? You should live long enough. Right? And how long does it take to change human behavior? Now we are talking. So what happens because of these relative differences in speed? That the subs it's the same thing with the human being, by the way. Not all parts of the body change at the same speed. Some get older faster. That's why when we get old, we are falling apart. Why do you think we are falling apart? Because the different parts of the body do not change at the same speed. And as the subsystems do not change at the same speed, it creates gaps. It creates cracks. Those cracks are manifested in what we call problems. Here is a take of value, YPO again. You always want to take of value every 10 minutes. Here we go. Any problem you have with your car, it does not start. With a faucet, it does not work in the house. With your marriage, with your company, with your country, analyze it. Something has fallen apart. Why? Something has changed. I'm telling you that. You take your car to the garage. It's not working. What is a garage person looking for? What has fallen apart? Because it's a system. One part falls apart, the system doesn't work. Same thing in medicine. Same thing true in a company. Now, here is a, here is a catch. We are living in very, very unusual time. We are living now at a rate of change, unprecedented in the history of mankind. The rate of change. Unprecedented. By the way, that explains why many of the diseases we have. 
our human body develops at a certain speed, you know. It took thousands of years to, to lose the, the, the tail. We used to have a tail. Million years we lost a tail. Now the rate of change with a, uh, what is it called, uh, adapted uh, vegetables when they make them genome, whatever it's called, and with the, all the chemicals and all the pollution and the water and the stress, the body cannot change so fast. It's not used to. It needs thousand years to change the speed we are going. So what does it develop? Cancer. Cancer says, you know what? I can't change anymore. I, I don't know what the hell is going on. I don't know what's going on anymore. All kind of diseases because of change. Here is the formula. Change causes disintegration manifested in what we call problems. Now, how do we solve the problems? Stop change. There will be no more problems, no more disintegration. Well, we already said you cannot do that. You cannot stop change. So what do we have to do? We do it from the other side. We have to treat that disintegration. So what is the solution? If disintegration is the causes of all problems, what is the solution? Integration. That's called healing. You know what the word healing comes from? From the word whole. Make it a whole. Psychologists say oneness or illness. I hope you hear me well, Greece. You have a problem of cultural disintegration. Like the Jewish people, they cannot agree. This is if they agree, they, they, they cannot live that day. They feel guilty. How could I agree? Jesus, how could I agree? I feel guilty that I agreed. Now look, all the subsystems are different. Now, if you know those of you that know my methodology, which I hope Ulysses will translate my book, so finally Greece will know it. PAI, they're different. P subsystem, A subsystem, they're different. Some, some are for the long run, some for the short run, some deal with effectiveness, some deal with efficiency. All of them are needed for the total system to work well. But they change at different speed. So you need to integrate them. Aha. Uh -huh. Here is a secret. Go to any church of any religion, including the Hindus in, in India. And you will see that the saints stand like this. What the hell is this? Why are they standing like this? Look at the Middle East. You probably have it in Greece too. It's called a hamsa. Women put it on their, on their chest as a blessing. They put it at the entrance to the house. What is this? What is this? Now just watch it. What do you see? Different fingers together. What the saints are telling you is be different together. In your marriage, in your company, in your country, and this bloody globe too. And what is a curse in the Middle East when they do it this in your face? Aha, be different, not together. That's the curse. Some religions. Some political parties say, we should be together, but the same. Look at this. We are all together the same. Communism, socialism, radical religion, racism. Do you see this? Does it work? You don't have a hand. You're paralyzed. That's why eventually communism failed. Eventually all this failed. Because you, you cannot change. But the world continues changing and falls apart. We need this. Now, how do we do it? 
which finger is the most important finger? Many people think this finger. Go do this, go do this, go there, come here, ta, pu, pichu. Look at all the sculptures. Davai, you know, with a finger like this. This is the right finger if the company, if the country, if the person you're talking to is very young. You're not going to have a democratic discussion with a five-year-old kid. Go to sleep and that's it. Or no dessert tomorrow. I don't know what. You, you tell them. That's why autocratic management is good for a young company. It's good. Somebody has to manage a darn thing. Too young. The same thing true, by the way, for young countries. That's why America is wrong, pushing democracy in countries where they cannot be democratic. <laughs> They're not ready for democracy. They're destroying the country. This is the right thing. But eventually, when the child is not five years old, but 40 years old, try to do it this way. <laughs> it will not work. Which finger is the most important? By the way, you know it's not called a finger? These are fingers. This is not a finger. This is a thumb. In some languages, it's not called even a thumb. You know what is it called? A hand maker. This finger makes a hand. That is a troll. The only role it has is to make a hand. If you don't have a thumb, you don't have a hand. So what is the role of to manage? Integrate integrate solve the problem by healing the company find out what is causing the disintegration too many of us try to solve the problem with band-aid oh we're losing sales uh, uh, reduce the price and have a sale uh, something increase advertising add another another feature to the product it's all band-aid. Ask yourself the question, what causes this integration? What is falling apart? Now notice, when you start like this, but with change, what's going to happen? By definition, with change, what happens? This integration continues. Buy a Ferrari. Oh, Ulysses says Porsche. Buy Porsche, the best Porsche. By the way, I don't know if you listen, but I consulted to Porsche, and Mr. Porsche, Mr. Porsche, gave me as a present a 911 Cabriolet with a big sign. Thanks to Dr. Adizas for helping our company. Unfortunately, it was stolen. But I used to have a Porsche with a little sign from, the, from Mr. Ferdinand Porsche. Buy a Porsche, put it in a garage. Don't touch it, don't drive it, it's too precious. Don't drive it. After two years, what's going to happen? You can't drive it. My dear friends, time disintegrates by definition. It's called entropy. There is nothing for you to do. Do nothing. It happens by itself. So you continuously have to integrate. It's an ongoing job. It's not a bring a consultant, take you goodbye. It's like a diet. If you diet, you will never lose weight. You lose, you gain. You lose, you gain. You, lose. you have to change your lifestyle. It's a permanent job. That's what Adidas does for companies. We are not consultants. I refuse to be called a consultant. We are organizational therapists, healers. We teach you to change your lifestyle, to continuously integrate your company because it's continuously falling apart. Not because of you, because of change. And you have to learn how to do it, by the way. It does not come with good intentions. There are tools. 
And those of you that have been my clients, you know that. We have manuals, we have systems, we, have, we, we train. We are more trainers than consultants. To change your lifestyle. Same thing is true for a family. I have a book, Ulysses, called The Power of Opposites. How to apply a decent methodology to family life. Because a family is also a business. It has budgets, it has definitions of job descriptions, it has a vision, it has a task. It's a business. And it also needs to learn how to integrate. Now I'm going to give you the bottom line of integration. Oh, I'm running out of time already. Bottom line. It's a long lecture, there are many books about it. I'm giving you the bottom. For integration, you need mutual trust and respect. If there is no mutual trust, there is no mutual respect, how can you integrate? There will be no peace in the Middle East. I tell that to the Prime Minister there. It's all talk. All put borders. It's all until we develop trust and respect for each other. Same thing in a marriage. When is a marriage over? When there is no more trust and no more respect. What does the respect mean? Recognize the rights of the other person to be different. You don't have to be like me. I recognize your difference. I respect your difference. Why? Because I learn from you. The curse in Greece, the curse in Israel. No mutual respect, no mutual trust. We have a cultural problem. What's a good manager? What's a good leader? You know, I do a lot of consulting to prime ministers. And prime minister says, Dr. Adizes, we have this crisis. What should we do, you know? And he's waiting for, you know, economic crisis. Except for me to give you some economic, macroeconomic uh, recommendation. Uh, the, 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 uh, maybe we should do uh, devaluation. Maybe we should do some... Uh, border you know, control, whatever. You know what they tell him, all of them? Mr. President, whatever you do, don't lose the trust and the respect of the people. That's why I have a problem with, with Trump. I, he's doing the right things. Many things he's doing right. But you know what's wrong? He's destroying mutual trust and respect, which is the most important thing for a company. Most important thing for a family. Most important thing for a person. A person that has no self-respect and no self-trust. What the hell do I do with him? He's busy between his ears. Oh, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to I want somebody who has it all together. Now, I want to finish by telling you one more thing, and I think that's going to be enough for today. is related to integration. Look at the development of civilization. Let's start. We started the chimpanzees. The strongest chimpanzee was the leader. Then we became nomadic. From one tree to the other, you know. The strongest hunter was a leader. Then we became an agricultural society. We settled. The guy with the most cows, the most with the sheep, the most land was the leader. Common denominator, muscle. The strongest. One with the most. And by the way, it continued into colonial era. The one with the most land, with the most countries, with the most mines, was the leader, the strongest. We still think in this term. We still think like we're in the Stone Age. But something happened. Industrial Revolution. Now the brain came into the picture. Now we had to plan and to budget the supply chain and market and sell brain. From industrial society, 
we are now in what's called post-industrial society, or I'm going to call it the digital society. It's computers and information, information society. What happened? The muscle is not as important anymore. What's important now? The brain. Look, the biggest transportation company in the world does not own one car. Who it is? Uber. The biggest hotel in the world does not own one hotel. No muscle. Computer information. What is it? Airbnb. Today, the power is not what you have. Not in quantity. In quality. Brain, brain, brain. What do you think Amazon is doing? Collecting information. What do you think is Google doing? Collecting information. You know what I'm doing in my consulting now? Changing the companies around how to collect information. The power is in the brain, not in how many machines you have. But this is also on its way out. The brain is on its way out. How? Artificial intelligence, quantum, quantum computing. They're going to be stronger than our brain. They're talking about this neural layer, whatever it's called, that this Elton Musk is doing. Going to put a chip in your head, connect you to the cloud, finish. You don't have to think. They will give you the answer processing it. The brain is out. What is on its way in? What is the future? From muscle to brain. What is the future? Please hear me. Please. The future is the heart. That's why I'm here so happy to contribute to this cause. The future is in the heart. The companies that work with the heart are going to beat the companies with the brain. That you really care. People know it. That you truly care. Greece is big in tourism. Do you do it with your heart or you do you with, with the bank account? If you are exploitative, you're going to lose it. I thank you very much for the opportunity to talk to you. Help MDA. They deserve it. They work with the heart. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Ijek, for these uh, first remarks. Uh, I have a few que questions here already for you, and and one which is directly to what you said. Can you please elaborate a little bit on how do you integrate uh, people that have different personalities, different styles? Uh, it, it appears to be a very difficult task. So sure. can you maybe say Look, something about it? I will give you a it? simple answer, which will sound like I'm doing a commercial, but I have to tell you the truth. I worked on this subject honestly for 50 years. Anytime I work as a, cons unfortunately, called consultant, I will be watching. I did not do it from books. I will watch people. I will watch people and take notes and take notes and take notes and take notes. And I wrote a book calling Leading the Leaders, How to Treat Different People, How to Manage Different People. I'll give you an example. There are some people's style, I call them style, managerial styles. I have three books about it, but Leading the Leader is how to handle them. It's very entrepreneurial. What does it mean? They like always to talk. They have ideas every morning, another idea. They're very dangerous after a vacation, 
and the very dangerous after flying more than three hours on a plane because when they come everybody says oh my god here he comes 300 new ideas possibilities priorities everybody's running crazy around how do you handle somebody like this number one is never tell him no you say no they go crazy what do you mean no you know because they take it personally it's not just an idea it's my idea and you're telling no you're undermining me never always say okay and then what do you do how do you defeat them because they have a crazy idea the guy is going to burn the company down you go back you make a long list of details questions where you ask to make a choice they don't like to make a choice they want to have the cake, give the cake, rent the cake, lease the cake, uh, give the cake. They want everything at the same time. That's a typical. Okay? By the way, Trump. You go and make details. Details. Where he has to make a choice. Then you come back and say, boss, that idea of yours, I'm ready to do it. But I have some questions. Some little questions. What do I do about this? What do I do about this? What do I do about this? In five questions, I can assure you, it's going to say, you know what? Put it in the back burner. Let's talk about it some other time. Why? American Indians had a symbol for these styles. This personality is called the eagle. He's up there. He sees the horizon. He can fly from one place to the other. His feet are not on the ground. So for him to move from left to the right, easy. Down there, up and down, canyons, you know, rocks. How do you discourage him? Bring him down to the ground. Bring him down to the ground. When you, think, when you bring an eagle down to the ground, it looks like a turkey. It does not look like an eagle anymore. Just bring it to the ground. It says, okay, how do we do we do about this? What do we do? Real, I'm not opposing you. I'm making you look reality, Cavron. So please read my book. By the way, don't read my book. Study the book. I'm giving now a webinar every Thursday for two hours for 17 weeks. I have 61 countries, only one from Greece. And I'm teaching how to do that. And I myself, reading the book, in preparing for my webinar, I'm learning from it because I forgot many things. Read slowly the book. How to handle different types. How to handle your wife. How to handle your husband. Please, the same thing. Same thing. That's it. Read the book. Next. I don't hear you. Yeah, I have another one. Uh, uh, could you please explain how we can build trust and respect in recent times where deglobalization is the new trend. How can we trust governments that try to control behaviors? How do we get rid of the conspiracy theories? How do we get, how can we handle, for example, you know, misinformation, which seems to be, you know, creating a lot of noise right and left. That was the most difficult question I heard in the last 10 years. I just came in from a doctor last yesterday. I have pain, well, in my age, I'm 83 years old, I have pain in my knees. And he looked at my picture and says, we need to do a total replacement of both knees. Can I trust him now? Or is he trying to make money from surgery? What do I do? By the way, there is a book, How to Avoid Unnecessary Surgeries. Because the doctors are trying to make money now. And they make you prescriptions that they, you don't need. They need money. Come again, and come again, and come again. How do I trust my lawyer that is not prolonging the system, that they think just the more, it can charge more? How do I trust the government with fake news? How do I trust anybody? 
How do I trust the food I am eating? That is not going to kill me. Very difficult times. The only thing I can say is we need to get united and to listen to each other. To listen to each other. To have organizations that we establish, that we trust, that tell us what to trust, what not to trust. There is an organization I'm supporting in the United States who are teaching people, they're journalists, they teach people how to identify fake news, how to analyze news to see if they're fake or not. We need to control Facebook, but the people are putting bad information in the Facebook. And you know what it starts with? The heart again. We need to find people that have a heart, that are not trying just to make money, that have integration, because what is heart? Integration, what is heart? Love. You know what is a maximum integration? Extreme integration, love. We need to bring love to life. It's not going to be easy because everybody is still in the stone age, more, 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 more. We have to move from more is better to better is more. We need more people with heart. I'll tell you what I'm doing. I joined a meditation organization from India called Heartfulness. And I meditate every day. You know, focusing on what? On my heart. Focusing on my heart. Not on my nose, not on my this, not on, the, uh, on, on my breath. On my heart. Calling my heart. Listening to my heart. Listening to my heart. Does it feel good or not? If it does not feel good, I don't do it. I have no other solution. Okay, but uh, uh, you have, for many, many years, taught organizations on how to build mutual trust and respect. I and at it. least how not to destroy mutual trust and respect. You have many techniques uh, that, that help develop that, that climate, which is absolutely necessary for the organization to move on. Right. So maybe you want to you wanna say a few examples. Sure. Uh, what, what does destroy trust? I mean, our country did manage to destroy its image and the trust people had in it, uh, as you probably know, with very serious consequences 10 years ago. So it's going to take, and it seems to be taking a lot of time to rebuild the trust we have destroyed. Okay, I, my, my methodology, which is very successful, in changing organizations and building mutual trust and respect. I'm very proud to say the methodology for companies works. I have, uh, we have examples of companies in Greece, like you heard, Karakopoulos and Petropoulos and others, that have been very successful with the diesel methodology. Here is how you do it. By doing it by not talking, by doing. Doing what? There are four variables that you have to establish in the company to build mutual trust and respect. And it takes 11 workshops, 11 phases, 11 interventions to make that happen. You start first with the diagnosis of the company, but we don't diagnose the company. We give them the tools to diagnose each other. And they themselves say, oh, now we know what we have, what the problems we have. And we, we, the whole group, agrees what we need to do to change. So we cause them to agree on the problems and the plan of action. by giving them tools to come to reality. In a very organized, systematic way, not with accusations, not with finger pointing, very systematized, and we are teaching them you can diagnose problems with respect and trust. That's the first step. With tools. They're solving problems in teams. Something like, like now is very much in favor. Now agile it's called and scrum, all kind. We have a better system than that, much more deep. Team problem solving. 
then opening the channels of communication from the bottom up, which are usually clogged in a company. They try to use, you know, suggestion box, open door policy, open the channels. Because whenever the energy flows only top down and not bottom up, you will get clogged energy. And that's a sign this is a reason for disease. Organizational disease, human disease, energy does not flow. You might call it this as a homeopathic methodology for organizational health. We give you the tools for you to open the channels. Then, common mission. Where are we going together? What is this company about? What are you trying to do in a changing environment? Together, together, together. Then, and the most important, the most important. Everything is preparation for it, which is organizational structure. Because if the structure is wrong, everything you do does not work very well. Because we are stepping on each other's toes. We are not working together because the job descriptions, the definitions, and the job, the structure is wrong. We work very hard to make the structure like a, like a watch, perfect, working seamless. Then the structure is three components. Defining the responsibilities, Defining authority. Who has authority to decide? And how does it reflect itself in the budgeting system? So the budgeting system is to reflect the organizational structure. And then the reward system. We usually talk about we need teamwork, but the reward is on individuals. So it does not happen. You want to have a teamwork? You have to have a team reward system. You have individual reward bonus for individual achievement and then achievement for teamwork. So if there is no teamwork, you don't get it. So now people know, oh, that's a reward. We have to work together. I, I but think, right now, yeah. I think, Go I think uh, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take something you just mentioned to push you in a direction uh, of one of the most valuable concepts that I learned from you is how to take a good decision and how to make sure to implement decisions. Could you please tell our audience and our friends here a little bit about those two topics? Explain sure. also, in other words, what is capping? There's a lot of confusion between authority and power, for example. Absolutely. But let's start from the first step. How do you take a good decision? The perfect ideal executive, which is the title of one of my books, does not exist. There, there is nothing perfect in this world. There is not even a perfect flower. Why? Which change is not the perfect anymore. There is no perfect husband. There is no perfect wife. There is no perfect child. There is no perfect parent. Nothing is perfect. Now, guess what? God is not perfect. He brought a flood, and then after 40 days, he scratched his head and says, this was a mistake. I cannot make them righteous. He admitted, and he brings the, he brings the uh, rainbow to rainbow. remind him to stop, to stop the rain, because he doesn't want to repeat the mistake. God admits he made a mistake. So the perfect person that makes perfect decisions all the time on any subject is mental, mentally sick does not exist. So what do we need? To learn from each other. I see something which I do, you don't see. And you see something I don't see. We learn from each other. You see this? One person is an eagle. He sees the horizon, feet not on the ground. The other one, the bureaucrat, sees all the problems, but doesn't see the horizon. Who is right? Both. So you, we need a complementary team that learns how to share information openly with mutual trust and respect and learn from each other to create a better decision that none of them alone can create. And this is a five-day course. We are starting now in November. Please join anybody. Write to me or enroll you in the class. How to do that? How to take five people that don't agree on day of the week to learn from each other and say, oh my God, I'm learning so much. We made a better decision together. You need what I call it democracy. 
white democracy we respect good democracy not a lousy democracy working democracy where we respect each other's opinion each other biases liberals have bias socialists have a bias the conservatives have a bias but we learn from each other and we make a better decision together openness respect for each other's differences learning from each other to make a better decision but that's not good for implementation try to implement change in a democracy you anybody can undermine the solution you know that by the way why democracy is dying all over the world democracy is dying because the rate of change requires a lot of decisions very fast and democracy is very slow so it's not working all over the world we are getting more and more autocratic leaders because the de the situation demands for faster decisions how do you implement now this is important because we have here the Athena, Athena school whatever you have a college here or university in all business schools, and I taught in many of them, and I give lectures to everyone because of my honorary doctorates. They only teach how to decide. They don't teach how to implement. Not one course on implementation. The assumption is, if you make a good decision, you will implement it. What's wrong with you? It's a good decision. Not true. Many good decisions never get implemented. And bad decisions immediately get implemented. Why? Here you have, for implementation, you need common interest. What unites the different thinkers to work together is common interest. Do we have common interest? Not easy to get common interest. So you need somebody with a strong head that says, guys, that's what we need together. And we are going to do it and no dissension. Get together behind the wheel and push. That means we have to unite who has the right to decide together with all those that can undermine his decision. You have to bring them in to see a common interest. You have to unite power, authority, and influence. Influence means those people that are whispering in your ear and saying, don't do this, do this, don't do this, do this, don't do this. Now, when they, they get together and agree, implementation is sure. So you need to bring the common interest of all the interested parties. Why should the workers cooperate? What do they get to gain from cooperation? We need to be, to, uh, let's talk about that for a second. Important, Ulysses. In time of Corona, it is a mistake so many companies are doing. Fire 30% of the people, so the balance sheet looks good, the profit there looks good, we are surviving. Wrong. Why? First of all, the 30% that you're on the street, unemployed, it's going to cost you a tremendous political problem. It's going to come and bite you. Ah, we are going to give them money to keep them quiet. That's what they're doing in America. How much is it costing you now? Inflation is going to go through the roof. What should we do together? I did it in my company. I didn't fire anybody. We all took a 50% cut in our salaries. All of us. All of us working part-time. We are all suffering. I took a 60% cut. My secretary took a 20% cut because she, she needed more, you know, to survive. So we take cuts. And if there are profits at the end of the year, I give back all the profits back to the people that took a cut. Work with the heart. Why is it good for the company? You know why is it good for the company? When you fire the people, after the corona, you need people. Now try to hire them. How long will it take you to find them, to train them, to integrate them, to give them the culture? Huh? You think you saved money? You're going to pay through your nose later on. Keep the people. The biggest asset you have is people. Good. If they're not good, fire them. But if they're good, why are you firing good people so that the numbers look good? Short-term orientation. Short-term and no wrong orientation. Reinforce the culture of integration.
true, but uh, uh, it is it is common as you know nowadays as, as companies get digital and they become leaner, uh, they are scaling down. Sure, they need true. less people, and of course that hurts the climate. No, but that hurts the climate, yeah, right. and it's demotivating uh, for the people. There is no question. So how do you align again all the rest of the people so that we don't completely destroy the trust and they understand that this is a necessity and a step to move further forward? I have written a blog this about This is a question it. I received uh, yeah, yeah. among sure, sure, our sure. audience. No, that's a very good question. By the way, the questions are incredibly good. I'm proud to be associated with the Greek people. Very good. Look, look, look. I wrote a blog about it, which I write every Friday. I encourage you to sign to on my blogs. The problem is bigger than the company. The problem is social macro problem. You cannot solve it at the level of the company. It's true. You're going into automation, digitalization. We need less people. A lot of people are going to be unemployed on the street. More than that, we are getting older, younger. With all the changes, you, you cannot catch up. You don't understand what's going on with the technology. I, for instance, anytime they tell me upgrade my computer, I, I break into, a, into, 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 into sweat. Oh, my God, another upgrade, another time to learn. I, can, I cannot find my way. I need a special guy, this guy that you, I have, Yura. Every 10 minutes, Yura, what do I do now? What do I do now? I feel like an idiot. We are getting older, younger. I just have a computer guy working for me in my company. He says, I need to hire an assistant. Why? I don't know what's going on. I'm hiring a 21-year-old now. Who's going to hire a 17-year-old very soon? We don't know. <laughs> we are getting older, younger. We are going to be obsolete at the age of 40. Try to get a job at the age of 40 now. You're too old. They will not hire you. So the problem is on a macro level. What I believe we need to do is to change the orientation of the country. Stiglitz, the Nobel Prize winner in economics, wrote a beautiful article about it. We have to discontinue using GNP as a measurement of success of a country. We have to add new variables, what I wrote in my blog. Variables that deal with better rather than more. GNP is more, 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 more. Let's talk about measurements of better. Health, education, crime, divorce rate. Reorient the society. I will have a lot of community centers for leisure time, for sports, for continuous learning. As you get older, go take courses at the university. We don't need more, we need better. As long as you have enough to eat, as long as you have enough to dress, as long as you have a roof over your head, that's enough. Now pay better quality of life. Because what is happening? We say more, 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 more. Standard of living has gone up. Quality of life has gone down. We have to change it. Now we have to bring the quality of life up on a country level then it's going to be okay. We don't need to work five days a week. How about working three days a week? It's called job sharing. You work three days, I work three days, and the other four days I go fishing, I go do my exercises, I go rock jogging, I take a course at the university, I paint, I write music, I enjoy life. We don't need more, we need better. So the solution there is on a country level, country policy level, rather than a company level. Okay. Uh, let me go back to a, a business uh, issue, or, or, or let's say not necessarily a business issue, uh, something which I found extremely important in, 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 uh, in uh, supporting mutual trust and respect. Maybe you want to elaborate a little bit on that. I read on one of your uh, articles, a good manager is someone who knows how to disagree without being disagreeable. <laughs> the Greeks yes. <laughs> tend to, to 
Yeah, right. Yeah, that's right. We need to disagree. But without being disagreeable. Why do we need to disagree? How are we going to learn from each other if we agree? If two, Zen Buddhism says, if two people agree on everything, one of them is not necessary. Talk to yourself. What do I need you? I need you. Now, you, you know that in business. You go to a lawyer. What should they do? He says, good, 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 good. What the hell did they pay you for? <laughs> tell me what is wrong. Don't tell me good, 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 good. What are the holes in my argument? What are the holes in my contract? What are the holes in my negotiation? So I look for somebody who disagrees with me that I trust. If somebody disagrees with me, but I don't trust him, I say, why is he disagreeing with me? I'm not going to learn. You work with a lawyer you trust. You work with an accountant you, love, you trust. You're always a consultant you trust who disagrees with you. Because if he agrees with you, you don't need him. You don't learn anything from them. Now but, the question, not, but, you don't need, but you don't need to disagree by being disagreeable. That's what you we're can talking look at about. the issue and sure. not try to diminish the other person's personality. You don't need right. to make him feel bad because right. he has another opinion. That's exactly true. So now here it is what we're going to do. I remember you trying to tell me, slow down. Absolutely. Slow down. I, will, I will tell you Listen. a joke. I'll Listen. tell you a joke. I'll <laughs> tell you a joke. I will tell you a joke to make the point because people don't remember my lectures, but they don't forget my jokes. So here is a joke, which is a bottom line. A father had two children, two sons. One was an absolute optimist. Everything is wonderful. Life is easy. Ha ha ha. He he he. You know, living in the cloud. The other was an absolute pessimist. Life is terrible. I hate my life. So many problems. I don't can't take it anymore. So the father decided to give them some experiential situation to try to enrich their style, to change them a little bit. He took the pessimist kid, put him in a room full with toys that a child can only dream about to show him that life is wonderful, son. You can have so much fun, my son. Life is full with toys. Enjoy life. Why are you so negative? He took the optimist kid and excuse me if I'm going to be a little bit vulgar because I don't know the right word. And he put him in a room full with horse shit up to his ankles to show him that life can be full with shit. Life is not so good, you know. <laughs> there is a lot of shit in life. So that not be so optimistic. After several hours, he went to see what's going on. The pessimist kid is sitting in the middle of the room crying. My life is this miserable. So many toys. How can I choose which toy to play with? Why did you put me in this terrible situation to suffer? He goes to the optimist kid and he's shoveling horseshit around, singing, whistling, happy like a clam. Says, how can you be so happy with so much shit? Says, with so much horseshit, there must be a pony around. So when somebody disagrees with you, don't look at the horseshit. Look for the pony. What can I learn from you? Why are you disagreeing? What is it that you know that I don't know? What is the information you have I don't have? What judgment you have which is different from mine, I can learn from. Now, some people, it's all horseshit and no pony. They're not, they're not, forget them. Forget them. Look, some people have something to say. Unfortunately, some people have to say something. These are the people who have nothing to say, but they have to say something. They just waste your time. Disassociate. Forget them. Fire them. Get them out of your company. They are wasting your time. You want to surround yourself with people that are your colleagues. The word colleague comes from the Latin collegum, arrive together. Somebody you can learn from. That's why you always say, 
may I disagree, may I respectfully disagree with my learned colleague. You never tell to your colleague, you're an idiot, what the hell are you talking about? A colleague you treat very respectfully. All your employees should be your colleagues, somebody you can learn from. You as a president of the company, I have news for you. The worker on the line knows things you don't know and you better know, you better find out what it is. Because you have no idea what's going on down there. You know something? The doctor tells you, you should listen to your body. Very important for being healthy. Some people, their head is detached from the body. They don't listen to the body. What's happening? They're sick. Every president of a company attached to the body. Listen to the little toe. Is the toe moving? Is there any pain in the toe? You have to feel the whole company and learn from each other. It's a question of attitude. If you look at every person as somebody you can learn from, you will treat them respectfully. But if you believe you know everything and everybody around you is an idiot, how do they dare to disagree with you? You have a problem. But I have now tools. This is a five-day course. I'm only talking about attitude. But there is a course, for instance. Uh, you want one of the tools? I'll give you one of the tools. You know, this is it's forbidden to talk at the same time, which is very Greek. They talk at the same time. Now we, and then, the, you know what happens? Because we don't hear each other, we raise our voices, hoping that by making louder, maybe you will hear me better. At the end, we have a fight. Forbidden to speak at the same time. When I speak, you don't speak. And when you speak, I don't speak. And in this methodology, when we say hard rules, you have to be quiet. I don't care what you think. Take a piece of paper as you're listening, write down. He's an idiot. I will kill him. I will fire him. What the hell is he talking? But shut up. Let him talk. When he finishes, he will say, Ulysses. Now you talk and I shut up. Why this is true? Because you cannot hear others when you're listening to yourself. You cannot. You cannot hear and listen at the same You cannot listen and talk at the same time. Show me a guy who can solve a problem while talking, and I will show you a guy that is making mistakes. Shut up. When you're talking, the mouth is closed. When the mouth is closed, the mind is stopped. You don't talk while you're thinking. So we force you to shut up and listen. Now you talk, I listen. You talk, I listen. Hard rules, such a small, simple thing. If you start talking while I'm talking, you may have to pay penalty and it goes to MDA. Donation to MDA. <laughs> rules. You don't have money, push up. Do something, say, I'm sorry, I broke the rules. No talking at the same time, by the way. Very helpful in marriage. To be applied in marriage. Rule. You don't talk until I call you by name. You talk when you call me by name. Rules. There is no mutual trust and respect without rules. We have to follow rules. We lose respect and trust when there are no rules. Everybody has his own rules. I have my rules, you have your rules. How the hell are we going to work together? You like to go golf and I like to go tennis. I apply tennis rules, you apply golf rules. Now let's play together. Adhesive methodology, you know what you, what you pay for adhesives? To give you a manual of the rules. That's what we teach, we're giving you. Rules, 50 years of experience, here are the rules that work. Follow the bloody rules. And you know what happens? We develop mutual trust and respect with the right structure, right conversation, right decision-making, listening to each other, and what happens? Wow.
the company really flourishes. Uh, I think we're coming towards the end. There are many questions up here, um, but I'll, I'll, I'll select one or two of them. Uh, one of them is, can you imagine the workplace of the future, particularly now uh, the virus has changed our way of living so fast. We keep on doing Zoom meetings, webinars like today. Uh, people don't sit anymore around the table in the fear of passing the virus the one to the other. We don't travel in airplanes. You know, we avoid all that. So the workplace is changing. I think it makes it very difficult to integrate people that you don't see in the eye, that you don't have you know, within reach, that you cannot go out and have a cup of coffee or, or a glass of wine together. You know, you just sit for half an hour, one hour on the internet, and then uh, each one goes on his own way. You know, very difficult to integrate, I find. So what will the workplace look like? Do you have any, any feeling for that? Will it make it more difficult to apply your, your rules? Just opposite. Ulysses. Ah, the opposite. Fantastic. The opposite. <laughs> uh, when the thing started, this corona started, we thought we are going to go in trouble at this. Is because what we do is we travel all over the world and work with companies. You know that. Now we cannot travel. We are all bankrupt. That's it. No, 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 no clients. Not even local clients, because you, you all, we are all in quarantine, you know. So what the hell do we do? We made the Syndag systematized to be done by Zoom. Fantastic. We have, and you know what? It was so successful. Now the CEO says, I don't want to do it any other way. And I want to do it all over the world. I have a branch in China. I want to do a Syndag now in China with the system. Because look why? Because here is what's what, what's going on. We are, it, we, our business is mushrooming. So the so I just last week I reorganized a IT company with four thousand people. The structure, twenty eight people on Zoom by Zoom. Restructure the whole company by Zoom. What you need is more rules. How do we listen to each other? more rules, really strict rules. Otherwise, the whole thing becomes a mess. And we develop the rules now. We have the rules and it works beautifully. But there is something else that you have to, which is important. I don't think we are going to, it, we are going to go back. We are going to start working from home. Because re people realize, what the hell, why do I need all this, you know, people traveling, traffic, you know, cost of, of offices, work from home. What does it mean? The need for trust is going to mushroom. You have to trust that the guy at home is working. There is nobody there, you know, clocking him when he started, clocking him when he stopped. There is no clocks. You have to trust him that he is working. The need for trust is going to go through the roof. And executives that don't trust are going to be in trouble. Because how are you going to work if you don't trust? You have to now have to rely not on hours, but on results. Management by results, more than ever. Are you producing the results? Am I getting the value for what I'm paying you? Thank you very much. I don't know when you started. I don't know where you ended, but I know you're giving me the value for my money. The whole managerial system is going to change a hell of a lot more around trust and around respect, that you're getting the information that you really need. For instance, for instance, I tell people, we make the black book, you know, the black book where we make the goals that everybody's supposed to achieve. And by the way, this is wonderful application I recommend called Monday. Applic Monday is called, the name of the application is Monday. You, you assign people what to do. You have the deadline by when they're supposed to achieve it, the dead, the dead date when you assigned it, who are they supposed to work with to solve the problem. I manage now by Monday. My whole life is around Monday. And I give them deadlines. 
which they agree to. Now I have a rule. In order not to lose respect, say, look, don't don't come to me because I check it every month. I call management by inspecting, not by expecting. I check. Did you achieve? I don't want you to violate the deadline. And then you give me an explanation. Let me tell you what happened, why I could not do it. You know, I say, look, and forgive me. They forgive me. I'll forgive you once, twice. The third time you're fired. I don't want forgiveness. What I want is the following thing. The moment you know that you cannot meet the deadline, call me, let's discuss it, and change the deadline. Because if you call me in time, we can still make some changes. When you violate it, there is nothing I can do. There are no changes I can do. You just stuck me. I need to know because I your deadline impacts his deadline, that impacts his deadline. So if you're going to violate the deadline, we have to make some corrections for everybody else. So you have to tell me in advance and not to tell me, oh, sorry, I could not have an explanation. Explanations not accepted. Forgiveness not accepted. People have to change their attitude to tell you, I cannot do it. I need to change the deadline. It is why. Trust me why I cannot do it. The whole thing is now built around trust. Tremendous on trust. Companies that are not going to have a trust and respect in the few and in the new environment. And no, trust and respect means integration, which means love. You cannot love people you don't trust and not, you don't respect. Are going to disappear. Hear me well. They're going to disappear. They cannot survive in the new environment. Adidas today is more needed than ever in the past. More than ever. I like very much what you say. And I tend to agree with you. And I find it very interesting, your analysis. Uh, before we close it, and uh, we pass the word uh, to Vanna, uh, one of your recent blogs, because I'm one of the subscribers, of, obviously, uh, was addressing the issue of decisions from the heart and decisions from the brain. And uh, I want you, first of all, to explain the two differences. But also, you were in this blog, you were saying there are some decisions you should take from the heart and some from the brain. So, or, mm -hmm. or in, in some order, in some ah, order. Yeah. So maybe, maybe you can please uh, explain that for our audience. Sure. The brain is split. By the way, I disagree with all these new age psychologists, health helps they say, who are you? Listen to your who you are. You have multiple than one. You're not one. Your head is split. You, you have PAI in your head, by the way. The P tells you, let's do it. The A says, are you crazy? Slow down. The E says, why are we doing it? What? The constant disagreement you have, you have PAI in your own head. And you have to process information in the right sequence correctly to come to a decision. The brain works as hard works totally different. It does not think, it feels. That's why we say, I love you with my whole heart. Do you know what the difference between liking and loving? You like because of. You love in spite of. In spite of. I have no explanation. I love you and that's all that is to it. When, somebody, when you ask somebody, why do you love that person? Because of. You don't love him. You like him. Heart works in unity. In unity, in totality. When you meditate... And you close your eyes and stop thinking, stop thinking, stop this terrorist called your brain, which is a terrorist. You connect to God. You connect to something bigger. And it will give you an answer, by the way. I'm teaching now people to meditate, executives. Anytime you don't know what to do, meditate. You will get an answer. I don't know whether it happened to you, Ulysses. You go to sleep with a problem. You wake up in the morning with a solution. 
What happened? You stop thinking. You need to stop thinking to find a solution. Do you hear me? Which is counterintuitive. What do you mean stop thinking? Stop thinking. Feel the problem. So here is my sequence. I start with my heart. Does it feel good? Should I do this or should not do this? Does it feel good? Um, it's like getting married. Does this girl or this man feel good? First of all, does it feel good? Then you start processing with your head. Yes, but there are this problem and that problem and this and this and this and this. And that. You come to a conclusion. But go back to the heart. How does it feel, the solution? Does it feel good or not? Let's assume that all your analysis is perfect. It says, invest in that company. You ask your heart and the heart says, I don't feel good about it. Should you do it? Absolutely not. But the numbers are right. No. The heart tells you no. It doesn't feel right. Like getting married. It does not feel right. Sorry. I don't know why. I don't care why. It does not feel right. So I go. Should I make a decision or not? Does it feel right? Yes. Make a decision. Does it feel right? The decision you made. Yes. Do it. But it was a mistake. It was not a mistake. You did the best you can at the point in time. You couldn't have done better. Now it's an opportunity to learn so we can do it better next time. You go heart, brain, heart. Fantastic. Is it always in this sequence? Heart, brain, heart? For major decisions, you don't need it for going to the bathroom. You, you can go to the bathroom without it. <laughs> okay, so listen, I think we have covered a, a, a lot of issues. This was, uh, from my point of view, a very useful uh, discussion. I hope uh, people manage to uh, get some good ideas, things that can, they can use in their life, in their professional life, in their personal life, in their family lives. Uh, obviously, some people feel that uh, uh, today the world uh, looks more for technocrats and less for people with a heart. Uh, I got a couple of those questions which we have not uh, addressed. Uh, I think I think uh, the future, however, is with people with knowledge, technocrats that also have a heart. And I think that's what you're trying to tell us. And that one thing alone is not enough. You need you need the skills and the discipline and the heart, you know, in order to succeed in 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 uh, in life. And obviously, if I understood you also correctly, you say, Okay, if you are the leader of the organization, you can probably work and change the organization, the style, the climate, uh, and all these things. If you are working in an organization and you don't feel comfortable, you don't think that those values and this environment allows you to prosper, get out. You don't need to stay in this organization. I think some people get stuck in a place for too long. And, 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 and don't make the move. They maybe don't trust themselves. They maybe think that they will not have another chance for another career somewhere else. So am I saying things that are sound familiar to you? Uh, I'm, I, will, I, will, I, will, I will tell you my mantra. I call it my Jewish mezuzah. You know, the Jewish have people have a mezuzah on the door that they kiss when they go into the house. And there has a prayer inside. It is my managerial prayer. My managerial prayer. Speak without offending. Listen without defending. Defending. Love without depending. And live without pretending. Once more, please. Okay. And I want to explain it because it's too important to skip it. Speak without offending. Why? Because you are trying to defend something. There is nothing to defend. I want to learn. 
I might be wrong. What am I defending? I'm open. You don't need to offend. What are you protecting? What are you defending? Listen without defending. Again, for the same reason. Why are you defending? Ah, oh, God forbid they're going to find out I'm wrong. God forbid I'm going to find out that I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. How great an opportunity to learn. What's, what's wrong with learning? Listen without defending. Listen. Love without depending. When you depend on love, what does it mean? That you are short of love. You don't have love. So you need the love from somebody else. God forbid, if you leave me, I am going to die. I'm not going to die. I still love myself. I'm not short of anything. I'm not deficient. I have love. Love without depending. And, and live without pretending. Why are you pretending? Why are you trying to be what you are not? Ah, you're trying to, to, to defend something. The common denominator, Ulysses, is fear. Fear that I'm going to be wrong. Fear that I'm going to prove that I don't know. Fear that it's going to prove in the time and nobody. Fear that I'm going to lose love. It's time to start managing with faith, not with fear. That is a major change for good management. I think fantastic. There's nothing I want to add to that. And let me now pass the word uh, to uh, Vana to close the event. Well, uh, I think we came to the end of this amazing event. Thank you so much, Ishak, for an inspiring presentation, for your time and effort to share your thoughts and expertise. expertise sorry. Thank you, Lysis, for your invaluable contribution and the excellent organization of the discussion. Thierry Chuck, listening to you took me back 25 years ago when I attended your seminar for the first time. You said back then that no single person can be great at all four management styles, producer, administrator, as you mentioned before, entrepreneur and the creator. At the same time, it takes a team to be truly effective and efficient in the short and the long term. And now I, I realize how important is the heart, which at that time maybe I, I couldn't uh, realize really. Now, as we grow up, we feel it much more. And I think also that in this time of crisis, your words are more timely than ever. And it's really important in order to adapt to this new normality. Thank you really all for supporting the Muscular Dystrophy Association of Greece. Thank you, Lysis. Really, you're a great moderator. Thank you for giving us the Thank opportunity. You. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I look forward one client in Greece so I can come back. <laughs> All the best. Great. All thank the you. best. Bye bye. Bye bye.